So join in and you can share this broadcast. Of course. Of course. I want to thank all of you all for all the love that you have shown me. All the honor that you have shown me on my birthday month. Thank you so much. Of course, we had a beautiful conference, real powerful conference. And it was so good seeing all of you all. And it's such a blessing to have you in my life and on these broadcasts. And thank you so much for sharing these broadcasts. And also, thank you for all of you all that have been sowing into me for years. Thank you for following these teachings for years. And thank you for your perseverance over darkness to flow with me. I really appreciate that. Really grateful for your resilience, your dedication, your continuance, and the warrior heart that you have to fight the good fight of faith. It's real commendable. And also, um, remember these teachings are not for you to be condemned. They are for you to be quickened, and there's a difference. Remember, you have to encounter truth for you to be quickened. If you don't hear the truth, you are already condemned. So remember, truth is a quickening so that you could begin again. It's not the end. It's wisdom to begin again. If you don't get the wisdom, if you don't get the truth, now you're actually condemned. You don't have any information on how to make a decision to create the proper fruit and achieve the correct reward. So the teachings is to quicken you. They're quickening, you need truth. And remember, you are blessed to have the truth at this dimension because with this level of truth coming to you, you have all power and all grace moving towards you for you to win. Like you don't have no ignorance or blind spots. This investment is so empowering. It's a mantle that can't be torn unless you disregard it or you get offended. So listen to me. In my book, I talk to you about the ear of deceitfulness. Listen to me with the ear of righteousness and the ear of hunger and the ear of wisdom so that you can be wise. Remember, the church is supposed to be without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. And how are you going to get away your crow's feet, your wrinkles? How are you going to get away your spots and your blemishes? You need a strong enough bleach. And that's what I'm giving you. I'm giving you bleach for you to take out the deep stains. I'm giving you some shout so that later on you could shout at the results that it brings from you obeying it. So let me give you the shout so that you can shout at what your life achieves within these six months, okay? In these six months, God has financial increase prepared for everybody that's listening to me right now. And I have to say this so that you can know this. So that when it happens, you will not, not forget that there's a purpose to this increase. In these six months, God said, that he wants to pit extra money opportunities in your bosom. He wants to cause money to find you on the earth through different avenues and different techniques and strategies. He wants extra money in your hands and this is what he's thinking about, all right? So this is an impartation of financial wisdom and dominion and fresh oil. Now watch this here. When you are sowing, expect the harvest to always be bigger than the seeds that you have sown and expect the harvests to come. 
especially in moments where you need it. I remember when I was uh, sewing, when I became homeless, I was sleeping in my car. I remember that there was moments where I could hear Satan mocking my sewing. I remember there was moments where Satan said, see, Shanae did that, see? No, Shanae did that, see? You could have had a place, see, see? And I remember those moments were moments where I actually got happy because I said, ah, if Satan is telling me I shouldn't have had did it, then I'm, I should have had did it. If Satan is telling me that I should have did it, then I should have had did it. And if Satan telling me that I shouldn't have had did it, then I should have have did it. And I understood the effectiveness of what my seeds had created by Satan's discouragement of the activity. And now you understand why I kept on sewing until I got to $4. Because I was like, she. If I could put that pressure on this fool like this, that Satan would try to put a feeling on me like I, 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 I was stupid, like I was wrong, like I, like I should have did something better with the money. I know what I just did created what I was supposed to create. So I spent my moments in praise. I spent my moments in thanksgiving. I spent my moments in giving glory to God and God gave me the solution out of my situation. The Lord sent me dreams. I remember even seeing in a dream one time, I had saw Dr. Mike Murdoch in a dream. And that's why I had told my mother, I told my mother, I said, uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna have Dr. Murdoch connect with me. I remember one time I got behind like a Target building. I saw a cop coming. I was like, money coming to me now. But then when I saw the cop coming, I had actually got out the car. I was at, behind the Target building. I saw the cop coming. So I was like, man, let me get back in my car because, you know, cops like to stop you and ask you questions. And then you up there pulling something. I'm like, what you pulling back here? What you pulling? And I remember one time I got back there. I said, Dr. Mike Murdoch, come in. To me, now, only because I was doing it off of the spirit of revelation, not because I was ambitious or something like that. I had knew the plan of God. So even when I was talking to Dr. Mike Murdoch, and then uh, when I got to the, the uh, he said he had sent me money, and I had used that money to get a hotel. And then I, I didn't, call him back or anything like that or anything like I didn't ask for nothing, you know. But the spirit of God had told me, when he calls you, go to Texas with him. So when he called me, he was talking and he was going to preach that night, but he said, you've been on my heart. I can't, I can't go do what I'm doing until I call you. And he said, how would you like to come to uh, Texas? And he said, um, I'll give you time to pray about it and stuff like that. I said, I'm coming. <laughs> you know, I ain't need no time or nothing like that. I didn't need no time. I ain't need no fast or no nothing like that because the, the Spirit of the Lord had already told me when he calls you, go with him. Remember the angel of the Lord told Elijah when he kept calling down fire from heaven. When they come this last time, the man humbled himself and the angel said, Go with him. Now, saints, I want to I wanna teach on that one day. As a matter of fact, I can give you a quick revelation on it. The, the captain in their 50 kept coming to Elijah with aggressive approach. They was like, come down right now and come with us. He, kept, he caught out fire from heaven. See, you got to be careful your approach to a prophet. The ones that came at him aggressively, he sent down fire from heaven. The one that came to Elijah real humbly, the angel said, go with him. So, so you got to understand in the spirit world, things could change whether or not you're humble or proud. When they was proud, they died. When the, when the one humbled himself, even though it was an enemy, 
When he humbled himself, the angel said, go with him because he came at the prophet correct. So saints, when I got with Dr. Murdoch, uh, uh, the spirit of the Lord had already told me that, but during the time um, after I had sold and um, I, was in a tough, I was in a tough situation according to natural, I called money coming. I called Dr. Mike Murdoch off of revelation because I had saw him. The spirit of God had shown me the vision that that was my connection, that I was supposed to uh, be with him and uh, flow with him and help him out and serve him. So I had already had a plan of God. So my goal now was to stay in praise and thanksgiving. I remember, um, I remember that the spirit of God would send help because on 9-11, at 9-11, when I looked at my phone, it was 9-11. I got a call from Apostle Jesse the Planis. And Apostle Jesse the Planis, he, and he's a multi-billionaire. He said that the, the Holy Ghost told him to send me a thousand dollars. He said the Holy Ghost told him to send me a thousand dollars on 9-11. That was the day. It was September the 11th and it was also 9-1-1 in the morning, a.m., not p.m., a.m. And he said the Holy Ghost told him to send me a thousand dollars. Man. And saints, I want you to hear this. I was praying to God to give me a thousand dollar seed. Now hear this evangelist, Jesse Plans has been to heaven. He's, he's seen a lot. And he's, a, he's an apostle, you know. Now, mind you, Dr. Mike Murdoch's dad um, and, and Dr. Mike Murdoch's family won Jesse the Planet's family. Jesse got saved underneath Dr. Mike Murdoch's um, uh, uh, father. They grew up in Louisiana. Come on, man. You understand? I could tell you more stuff, but I won't. <laughs> Now, say, so watch this here. I kept on sowing, kept on sowing. I knew that my seed was creating what I intended for it to create plus more, and it did. And so my whole life opened up through sowing. That's why, I that's why I'm telling you, and see, to this day as a leader, see, I'm even going to sow another $1,000 uh, today. I'm always sowing. And so that's why my soul is so rich. I got so much partners right now that's receiving financial miracles back to back to back from checks in the mail, from um, increase at their workplace, from being raised. I'm, I'm seeing all type of miracles going on in my partners because my soul is a sowing soul. So the reaping anointing is heavy. You hear what I'm saying? I wear a heavy reaping anointing because the sowing is not yesterday. It's present, it's active, it's today. So hear me out, people of God, watch this here. So when I was sowing, um, even after I got with Dr. Mike Murdoch, I kept on sowing, kept on sowing. See, the seed is a perpetual grace that has expansion attached to it, increase attached to it, so you never stop doing it. And seeing the sowing anointed, it'll check you because how is it that you don't got enough money to sow and pay your bill? It's either two reasons. You can acquire stuff in your life that God has not ordained the time for you to acquire it yet. So if something is taking up the money and you can't sow, there is a big possibility that you're not even supposed to have that. 
Did you know that? That the time to possess that is off. Another degree is that when you're sowing and you don't got enough to pay your bills, you have not tapped into the wisdom of God that he has reserved for you. So you need to go to him and say, Lord, I receive wisdom and understanding. Show me what I'm supposed to do. Show me what decisions you want me to make. Isaiah 48 verse 17 says, I, the Lord, I am he that teacheth thee how to profit. I remember years ago, I had a son and uh, the son was telling me, you know, I just quit my job. I had listened to your teaching and I want to seek the Lord. I want to run after the Lord and I want to give the Lord my time. And I said, you, 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 I hear you, but you, you're a little stupid. I say, you're stupid because you don't understand. You're serving the Lord at your job. And God put in seed in your hand for you, your life to move. And I told, I told my son, I say, your life don't move when you're not making money. And I say, I, say I, 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 know, I know there's a lot of spirituality that people be talking about, but your life doesn't move when you're not making money. Your life ain't moving. When you in a place where you ain't making no money, and I would tell him, I said, that's what Satan wants. Satan wants you to say that you're seeking God. I said, do you know how much men get with a woman? They have children, they broke, and they telling their wife, you know, I'm waiting on God to make a way for us, honey. And that man up there got him and his children suffering simply because he don't want to make no money. And he young and able. He got energy, he got life, and he talking about I'm waiting on the Lord. And him and that woman go through all type of storms and troubles and issues and poverty simply because that man is not using the wisdom that God has reserved for him. I was teaching my son that. Then the son went on to start making a lot of money, started getting promoted, started getting increase at his workplace, um, had enough money to even get a vehicle. And just, just was moving in a lot of uh, financial favor with God and with men. And was sowing into me and honored me and had more left on. Now watch this here. The son had a mother and um, the mother needed help in her rent. So watch this here. The son came to me one time and said, Prophet, I told my mother... I need to sow into you so I, I can't help her out with that rent. I told him, I said, listen, don't ever do that again. I said, go help mama out. Fix mama's situation. And after, we'll talk. So I reversed the seed, told him, go pay that bill for your mama. And assist her there. See, there's financial uh, wisdom to every situation. Every situation is not done the same. Every situation is not done the same. Now, the sowing anointing going to expose to you how deep you are in the Holy Ghost. Because in sowing, you have to create purposes. You say, prophet, what you mean by that? You got to think out sowing. You got to meditate sowing. And you got to recognize what the seed is purpose to bring back in return in the realm of the harvest. And you got to think strong about it. You can't be lackadaisy and just wishful. You got to know what you're doing. And you can't sow an amount that's smaller than what God wants you to sow. If God say, I want you to sow this amount, you can't say, well, I'm going to sow a little bit underneath that and I'm going to name this. Now you just forfeited something. You got to stick to the, um, the, uh, the exactness of the instruction because the seed got a purpose to it. Like I said, I'm gonna sow a thousand. I got a seed. I got a purpose to this thousand dollar seed that I'm sowing. You see? 
I got a purpose to it. So I'm not sowing it unknowingly. I, I got a target and an aim to the seed. You see what I'm saying? Remember, nobody is in control of the money that you can unlock in this life. Nobody but you. When you are sowing, you're partnering with the angelic for money that has no boundaries. You're partnering with the angelic for finances that have no, no, no limits. You want to live underneath an open heaven in the financial power of the spirit. Solomon had enough money to sow and to take care of his house. He was sowing like crazy, plus he had enough money to financially take care of his house. So there is a open heaven ministry of the father where he ministered seed to the sower, bread for food, and there is an abundance working for you, even though you haven't got to the finale of abundance, you'll still have abundance in today. The Lord will take care of you if you really zoom in to his wisdom. He'll bail you out. He'll bring you out. He'll show you where your money at. I want to say this before I get off of here. Listen to this closely. Everybody has secret places where large money has your name on it, on the earth. Everybody has secret places where large money is hidden on the earth. And in the secret places, you have to get there through tongues, praise, perseverance, servanthood, attentiveness, and willingness. I want you to hear me. Everybody has secret places on the earth where there's millions of dollars, billions of dollars that have been sanctified by God for you. Joseph, when he became governor, he found the secret place where all his wealth was. He had control of all the money. When Abram, God appeared to that man in the dream, said this is his wife, gave him wealth. He found a secret place. Remember, he went south. He had a very rich man in silver and gold. Genesis chapter 13, he found a rich place. When Esther humbled herself, became the woman that the king of Hazaris was looking for, a woman that was respectful, a woman that was obedient, a woman that feared him, reverenced him, a woman that respected him, let him do his kingly office, she unlocked the wealth gate. When Abel started sowing, he didn't stick to his father's spirit, which was of sin now. He chose to sow his way out. He chose to honor God financially. He was working and sowing, working and sowing, serving and sowing, serving and sowing, serving and sowing. And his brother Cain saw the result of the seed. And he looked at God and said, why I ain't got that? Why I don't got that? And Abel kept on sowing. Abel found the secret places on earth where all of his millions were, all of his prosperity was. Everybody has secret places on earth where all your money is. When we look at the life of Solomon, he didn't stick to the open heaven of David. He opened up the heavens himself. He started sowing his way out. The Bible says Solomon kept on sowing, kept on sowing, kept on sowing. And God said, I will give you riches. Do you understand what he did to God? He showed God that he wanted to worship the Lord with his money. And the Lord said, I'm going to give you so much money that you're going to enjoy your life. You're going to have that sowing anointing in another dimension because you're going to have so much money. You're going to have the power to sow what you want to sow. You're going to have so much possessions. You're going to have the power to sow what you want to sow. And it was all through him persevering and sowing. It was him persevering and sowing. 
When a person perseveres in sowing, God gives you the offer of riches before you offer up the petition for riches. Ah, that's so heavy. When a person is sowing, God gives you the offer of riches before you offer up the petition for riches. 